Hello internet friends, it's me, Literal Cream, and today we're going to be telling some stories and dissecting some jelly babies. Probably like, what the fuck? Well, when I was in the fifth grade, I had a friend, and she lived in the city, so it was hard for her to come over to my house. So on the weekends, she would come home with me on school on Friday, stay the whole weekend, and then go back to school with me on Monday. On Friday nights, we would usually go to the mall, go to Claire's, and they had these rubber chickens. They were like maybe six inches, and when you gave them a squeeze, out popped this yolk in this little egg sack that was all milky, and there was this water in them. We would dissect them. We would put on doctor's masks and gloves, lay down paper towels, and just cut them up. It was a fun activity, and we looked forward to doing this. I know, right? I was at Walmart recently, and I saw these things. I guess they're actually called water babies. And every time I see them, I just want to cut them open. There's water in them, and I thought that would be a fun thing to do. I used to play this game with my sister when we were kids, and it was called the cutting game, where we would take toys and cut them up into pieces. So, that was a fun time. I've got some good, like, childhood cringe stories for you all today. The first story that I can't even think about, it makes me cringe so much. And I'd forgotten about this for years until I recently remembered it. So that same friend that liked to dissect rubber chickens with me eventually ended up moving to the suburbs. And she invited me over to her house for a sleepover. And I was so excited. She was my best friend. I was looking forward to sleeping over at her house. When I got there, her room was messy. And it wasn't like trash everywhere, like dirty. Just kind of messy. And... I made her clean her room. I helped her clean her room. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even think about that without cringing into oblivion. Like you go over to someone's house and you're like, your house is messy, we need to clean it. That's so rude. That is so rude. But at the time, I was like 10 years old. And I loved to clean. Like I had a best friend that lived down the street from me and she would call me up be like, Hey, like, I'm not free right now. I have to clean my room. And I'd be like, oh, let me help you. I would clean her room all the time. I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. So going over to this girl's house and, like, cleaning her room, I thought it was fun. But now that I think about it, that's such a rude thing to do. Oh, my God. I can't even think about it without just cringing. <laughs> I really thought that I was doing a nice thing, that it was fun. I was so ignorant, but I guess ignorance is bliss back then. So we're going to cut these open. I was really hoping I could find like a razor blade or something. But I'm not allowed to have any more of those since I was a seam kid. I'm just kidding about the first part. <laughs> I couldn't find any. So we've got scissors and a knife and a stapler. These things are really tied in there. But I remember how Barbies would be so secure in their boxes. It was such a pain to open them. Okay, oh, so you can collect them all. This one is named Wee Apple, and this one is Wee Pineapple. That's really weird. Bitch. It does say that baby is filled with water. You can hear it. But I still want to cut it open anyways. Seems like a fun thing to do. I guess I'll just stab it with a knife to start off with and see how that goes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it squirted. <laughs> Ew, that's so... Oh my god, I just got that on my laptop. Oh my god. Do you guys know that video of the girl that's like, it's not pee, it's squirt? Ew, I should have got a bowl, but I am pretty sure this is... Just water, that is what it says, but that's really gross. Ew, ew, it's squirting. <laughs> uh, I thought 
think I got it all out. Yeah, that was fun. I'm gonna cut its little feet off. This is a very sharp knife. Okay, um. Ew. Oh, there's the rest of it. Uh. <laughs> I remember doing this with the rubber chickens and we would like sterilize our instruments afterwards and like wash them up in the sink. But you know that video that's like, it's not pee, it's squirt. If you don't know it, you should watch it. It's really weird. I have some pee stories. Kind of gross, but some pee stories from when I was a child. I used to pee on the rugs in our house. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure I was like three or four. And I would pee on the rugs. And no one ever said anything to me. Like, my parents never sat me down and said, hey, little cream, don't pee on the rugs. That's inappropriate. That's disgusting. Use the bathroom. No one ever said anything to me. And there's no way they didn't know. Like, you must have smelled that piss or something. And I don't know how long this carried on for. I only remember doing it, like, a handful of times. But just, what the fuck? It's really weird. I wonder about my sister. When she was younger and she had to pee, she would sit down on the toilet with her pants on and pee and then take off her pants and like run and go change. <laughs> Kids are so fucking weird. I'm gonna cut its arms off now. Ooh, what a clean incision. This is really creepy. I don't know what to do with these, but I just wanted to cut it open. It seemed like a fun time. It is a fun time. Very therapeutic. Oh, uh, <laughs> I've got another cringe story for you guys. When I was in second grade, I was like seven years old, and we had a teacher, and then we also had a teacher's helper. And this helper was like the cool teacher. Her last name was Denison. We would call her Denny Man, like Denny Man, you know, Miss Denny Man, come play with us. She was cool. She was one of us kids, or so I thought. So one day I was out in the hall with her and another student, and we were hanging up portraits or something, and she bent over, and I slapped her ass. I slapped the teacher's ass, because I thought it would be funny when you're at that age. You think that, like, oh, butts are funny, but... <laughs> Thought she was like one of us kids. I would never have slapped a normal teacher's ass, but oh my god, I'm so mortified. She just turned around. She was like, literal cream, that's inappropriate, don't do that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I won't do it again. <laughs> I was really thankful for the way she handled it. Like, no one else saw. It was just the couple of us out in the hall. She didn't tell the teacher and be like, I'm worried about literal cream's behavior. She was just like, that's inappropriate, don't do that again. And I'm like, shit. You're fucking right. <laughs> I slapped a teacher's ass. Good times, right? So one of the students she helped out was actually my friend. And one day in the fourth grade we were playing at recess. And I jokingly said like, do you have a problem? <laughs> and she goes, actually I do. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Sorry. <laughs> she had the helper teacher, and I think she had some type of muscle problem. I don't know exactly. But I was just jokingly, jokingly like, oh, do you have a problem? She was like, um, I do. <laughs> uh, I cringe at that too. But she wasn't mad or anything. Like, we were friends. It was really weird. I feel like that's kind of inappropriate because it's a baby. But I didn't see any rubber chickens. Mind you, I didn't go to Claire's. I went to Walmart. But I didn't see any chickens to cut up. Otherwise, I would have. If I find them, definitely. Ooh, look at that. This is modern art. I'm making art, you guys. Come to my exhibit. Another story for y'all from elementary school. Someone commented on one of my videos, they were like, oh, you should try voodoo magic or something. And I'm thinking, bitch, I did that. <laughs> I read this book in fifth grade, and it was about a guy who like abused his daughter, and she got really mad at him, so she made a voodoo doll out of a candle and hair from his hairbrush, and she started torturing him 
and I remember like a social worker comes or something to check up on them because the dad's complaining about all this pain and the person visiting sees the girl playing with this doll and they're like oh what is that and she goes oh it's just candy and bites it off the head and there's a scream from upstairs and that's how the story ended and I really like that book don't remember what it was called but it inspired me so this girl that I didn't like I don't even know why I didn't like her I was just going through that goth phase and she was like a popular kid I guess I don't know I I actually used to be friends with her for a while that same year, so I don't remember. But another friend of mine went up to this girl and we were like, would you mind giving us a lock of your hair? Like, my uncle has cancer, um, we're trying to make a wig. And she was like, oh, okay, definitely. So she cuts off a few inches of her hair and gives it to us. And I made a doll just like the one in that book out of a candle and like pins and I taped on the hair. And nothing ever came of it. It didn't work. And a few years later, someone asked me, they were like, oh, didn't you make a voodoo doll of that girl? Like, that's really weird. And I was like, oh my god, no, that wasn't me. And I convinced them all it was this other girl who was, like, even weirder than I was. Because I was a socially awkward child, and that's just what kids do. Kids will be kids. This brings back so many memories of high school. <laughs> I have another uh, story I did, something like kind of petty. When I was in college, like freshman year, I was in a dorm room and there was a bunch of us sitting on the floor in a circle. I think we were smoking pot or something, I don't remember. But this one kid kept touching me, like touching my hair, and I said to him, like, stop that, don't touch my hair, like, don't do that, and he kept doing it. And I was getting really fed up. And he had mentioned earlier that he didn't know who my friend was. And like everyone knows who my friend is because he had this purple hair. Just everybody knew him. And I was like, okay, you don't know who my friend is. You don't exist. I was just so mad at this dude. He wouldn't leave me alone. So I'm like, you don't exist. And I got everyone in the circle to pretend this guy didn't exist. And we all just ignored him for quite a while. And he was getting really fed up. And eventually, at the end of the night, I'm like, fine, you exist, but don't touch me. That was inappropriate. I told you to stop. You wouldn't stop. So, bitch, you don't exist. Never said I was a nice person. So, I have a story about middle school that just really makes me so angry, even to this day, to think about. So, when I was in the third grade, I had a play date with my friend. And I had called up a few of my other friends that day to hang out and they were all busy and so I called her and we hung out and we had a great time. She was a really good friend of mine and I was glad we got to hang out. As we were going to drop her off, I mentioned to her that, oh, I called all these other people but they couldn't play and then you were free so we hung out and I'm glad we hung out. And I thought that was a nice thing to say. I'm eight years old but then my mom informed me after we dropped her off like you shouldn't say that because then she might feel that you didn't really want to hang out with her. And that made me feel really bad. And I made sure never again to say anything like that. If I called someone else up, they weren't free, and I hung out with someone else instead, I would not tell them that they weren't my first choice. Cut to seventh grade. Clinton Kelly from What Not to Wear was going to be visiting at a mall. And I had planned to go with my friend, but she canceled like the day before. So I invited this other friend to come with me. Because I'm like, hey, you want to come to the mall with me? And so she does. And when we're in the car on the way back, my mom, my fucking mother, mentions, oh, it's a shame that your other friend canceled or something along those lines. And I was so upset because my mom was the one who informed me that you should never say that. And she did right in front of my friend. After we dropped her off, she ended up getting mad at me. She's like, oh, you didn't really want to invite me to the mall. You didn't want me to come blah 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 and she was actually upset and we got into a fight and I kept saying like oh I just thought it'd be fun to go with you like I go to the mall by myself all the time I just thought you might like to come with me and I'm glad you did and she was really mad at me for that and I'm like mom another story about this friend also in seventh grade she asked me to get something from her locker and she gave me the combination so I did I went in and I got it and then the next day her glasses are missing and she's saying to me, did you take my glasses? And I'm like, no, I didn't take them. She's like, you're the only one that knew my locker combination. They're in my backpack. 
And I kept saying, I didn't take them, it wasn't me, but she suspected me. Later that week, she confronts me and she tells me that she knows I didn't take them. It was her mother. Her mother went in and took her glasses out of her backpack because she was worried her daughter wasn't wearing them and wanted to see how long she would go before she went to her mom and asked for her glasses and mentioned it and brought it up. I don't know, that logic doesn't make any sense, but her mom was the one that took her glasses out of her backpack to see how long it would take her to notice. If you're a kid and you think you lose your glasses, you're not going to go to your parents and be like, oh, mom, I lost my glasses. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> it was so gross. <laughs> Look at that. When I was a child, and I would go to the bathroom, here's another bathroom story, I would sit on the toilet and make siren noises because I thought that it would make my parents think that the police were coming and they would be scared. And I thought they were really convincing siren noises, but they weren't. It was just over and over and over again. And my parents never said anything to me. They weren't like, what the fuck are you doing? Kids are so fucking weird. Okay, we're gonna stab this baby. You're gonna make him squirt. Ooh. Ew. Ew. Ah. Ew. <laughs> Do you know those, um, I don't know what it's called, but there's those there's weird videos on YouTube where it'll be like Spider-Man or Princess Elsa and they're targeted towards kids but then they do a lot of fucked up stuff, a lot involving like shit. It's like porn almost but it's for kids and they just do all this weird fucked up stuff and they just wear these costumes. I don't know what they're called exactly but it's weird and there's like conspiracies regarding them and all that shit. I don't know what's up with that but I kind of feel like I'm doing that right now. So I'm cutting up these weird toys and making them squirt all over each other. Uh, I guess I'll cut its arms off again because that was kind of fun. These are not as fun as the rubber chickens or maybe I just don't find this so fun anymore because I'm not 10 years old. But the rubber chickens were fun because they had this whole like yolk sack that you could poke and cut up and dilate the yolk. Ew, that's a lot of water. I really hope this is just water. I think it is, but they are called water babies, but I always think they're called jelly babies. I also got this thing. It's a squish delish. You know those weird squishy things? I don't get the fad. And I've seen YouTubers like do squish unboxings. I don't get what they are. I think they're weird. But I thought it'd be fun to cut up. And so this is a surprise squish. Let's see which one we got. Hashtag unboxing, am I right? Ooh. Oh, it's kind of cute. I don't get what you're supposed to do with them. I think this is cookies. Like an m, &M cookie. I don't know what that is. It's not even listed on the back, so whatever. It's fun, but as a kid, I would not have wanted to play with this. I like to play with real animals. I wanted to play with toy dogs or cats or zoo animals. And they have those things called Shopkins, which are toy foods and toy accessories, like little shoes with faces on. And I just, if I was a kid, I would not want to play with those. Do kids like playing with those today? Like, do kids want to play with toy pineapples and toy cookies? I just would not have been able to do anything. It is fun to squish. I can get that appeal. Squish delish, but this was like five. No, it's like six dollars for this. Like, I just want to get it open. It's probably just um, foam or something. It's actually kind of a challenge to cut open. There we go. Ew. Ooh. 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 Look at that. It's just a weird foam. Yeah. That's fun. I just want to cut that open. I'll tell you a sad story that to this day, I just, I can't like forgive my dad for. Like I can't forgive my mom for telling that girl that <laughs> I didn't want to hang out with her that day. <laughs> I did. But this is the one I can't forgive my dad for. I had pet chickens. I still have two. We originally had six. Um, and they kind of got out over the years and never returned, so. I had this one chicken, 
Her name was Adelaide, and I called her Addie. She was a wonderful chicken. She would sit on my shoulder. I would walk around with her. I bought her a leash. I would take her out of the coop, walk around the yard, and lift up stones and hold her up so she could peck at the grubs underneath. I loved Addie. She was a wonderful chicken. Chickens can feel empathy. I don't know if you knew that, but she was just really sweet. We had another chicken named Cora, and Cora had actually gone out, and my dog got her, but she was okay, and we found her. She was injured, though, and when I put her back in the coop, she, like, snuggled up next to Addie. Like, they were friends. They were sisters. They really feel for one another. They had a run attached to the bottom of my trampoline. We fenced in the bottom of that so they could run through there, and there was a hole in the fence that they were getting out of, and so we patched it up a bit. And my dad had the day off from work, so I told him, if you're gonna let the dog out, you need to keep an eye on him. Do not let him out, because there's this problem with the fence that he said he was gonna fix, and he's like, okay, yeah, I won't. Came home from school that day, and the fence is fixed. I'm like, thank you. So I go up to my dad, and I'm like, oh, you fixed the fence? And he goes, yeah, but I fixed it a little too late. One of the chickens got out, and your dog killed him. And I was so angry, and I said, which one? And he goes, Cora. And I was so upset that it was Cora because she was the original two we got. We got Cora and Addie, and then later on we got a mom and her three babies. So Cora was like my sister's chicken, and Addie was mine. And when he said, Cora is dead, I was so heartbroken. So I went out to the coop, I opened the door, and Cora was sitting there. It was Addie. He meant Addie. And I just screamed. I was so angry. I yelled at him. I threw stuff all around the house and just cursing his face up. I'm like, how the fuck could you do this? I hate you, I hate you. Like I told you a million fucking times, do not let the dog out of the house if you cannot keep an eye on him. I've told you for weeks, you need to fix the fucking fence. And he's just like, stop getting mad at me. And I'm so angry. And he buried her, like I didn't even get to say goodbye. And I'll never forgive him for that. It makes my blood boil. I'm still so angry at him. I loved that wonderful chicken. I can't get over it, I never will. Because there's just such a careless thing he did, and he does a lot of careless things. I would come home from school, and the whole house would smell like gas. Because on our stove, if you turn the dial all the way to the right, the fire goes off, but the gas is still on. He would do that countless times. Come home, the whole house is smelling like gas. I do love my dad, because he's my dad, but he did a lot of careless things that really frustrate me. But it was really fun to cut these things open. My sleeve is wet. I feel like I've been rambling all over the place. I hope you guys did enjoy some of those stories. Um, playing with this knife has brought back so many memories of high school. <laughs> um, and the one I remember the most was the knife game. That was trending back then. I wanted to do it, so I had this yearbook, and I would just like play the knife game every day. And on that yearbook, there's like a whole outline of my hand from where it was. I want to see if I can still do it. Oh, I have all my fingers. The knife goes chop, chop, chop. If I miss the spaces in between, my fingers will come off. And if I hit my fingers, the blood will soon come out. But all the same, I play the game because that's what it's all about. Oh, chop, 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 chop. I'm picking up the speed. And if I hit my fingers, then my I used to be really good at this back then, but I had not played this in years. Give it another go. Oh, I have all my fingers. The knife goes chop, chop, chop. If I miss the spaces in between my... Ah, fuck! <laughs> good times. I remember my hand was so cut up back then because I would just play it all the time. Do it with the other end. Oh, I have all my fingers. The knife goes chop, chop, chop. If I miss the spaces in between my fingers, will come up. Need to get over the fear. I can't, I can't do it, there's no way. I'm gonna stab myself again. It's beautiful. Okay, so I don't know what this was. That was really all over the place. I just wanted to cut up these things because I always look at them and I want to cut them up. That was that. You now know who I was as a child and I was just fucking weird back then. Never said I was a good kid, never said I was a nice person. And um, now it's just confirmed. Okay, so bye.